I have to say, I remember the very first time, uh, many, many years ago, I first drove into Ayrshire. Um, uh, my husband is Scottish, and I'm clearly from God's homeland of Northern Ireland. <laughs> and uh, uh, we drove in, and the force of the spirit of death on this part of Scotland, this is years ago, was horrific. And I remember the spirit a death spirit just coming wave after wave at my car and I'm a seer means I see in the spirit realm I could watch them and I thought I don't think I'm going to be able to stay in Ayrshire and we were going to a friend's house for tea actually in West Kilbride and my and I, my husband parked the car and I didn't really know these people and I just pushed them out the way and ran into their house with this is Michael and Gail Montgomery without even so much of an introduction because I just wanted to hide away in a house full of the glory of God and not be on the land of Ayrshire. That was my first Ayrshire experience. And I thought, God, how will I ever go back to that awful place? <laughs> <laughs> but you have done an amazing work of prayer over the years. And I know you have fought and you have contended. And for some of you, it nearly cost you your lives and it nearly cost you your faith and it cost you a lot of friends. But I want to start off by saying a massive well done. You have changed the atmosphere of Ayrshire. It is almost unrecognizable from what it was even 15 years ago. And it is a joy to be here, not a, oh my goodness, Jesus, when can I leave? <laughs> Prophets are quite straight talking, is that okay? And there is a sense that we are here to set you up for what God wants to do with you uh, in the future. Can you just stand <coughs> today for me? Sometimes in the noise and the distraction, just close your eyes, my, my lovely family, for me, okay? And if you want to open your hands just to, as, a, as a sign before God of, of being receptive to him. Sometimes in noise and in distraction, it's hard to find him in the earth because of the cacophony that happens round about you. But there are moments in that where God says, do you know what? I'm just going to catch you up. And I'm going to pull you into my glory, Clyde. Because the earth is so noisy right now. And the Lord just wants to catch you up. And I feel like what we're doing right now, and what I'm training you in, even as an introduction, is something you're going to need to know how to do in a noisy season in the earth. Where you say, I, I can't hear you right down here, God because of the booming ridiculousness of other voices. But catch me up to the cloud of your glory. <clears throat> and just let him do that for you because he loves to pull you up close. And it's quite misty because his glory cloud is thick, but that is okay. And the Lord says that I want you to come up here frequently so that you might imbibe who I am just in my cloud. So Father, with these dear precious family members of mine with their hands open as a sign of receptivity, Father, would you put the dew and the moisture in your glory cloud on them right now. And would you mark them and touch them with glory. And I feel like the Lord is saying, I want to give you a frequent out where when it's too much down here, you know how to say, take me to that misty cloud and let the glory come thickly to where I am and cover me. And sometimes, you know, God grabs <clears throat> the word God says, his prophets by the hair and he just pulls them up. 
So, Father, we welcome your glory, Clyde, into this place. And, Father, we want to do business with you where you are. We do not want to be in a cacophony of noise several paces removed. But we want to be with you where you are right now. Have a seat for me, family. <coughs> so let me just bring a word uh, uh, that I felt God gave me for uh, this community here. And I heard the Lord say this, I want to resurrect my power, said as an Irish accent, I want to resurrect my power in this community. I want to resurrect my power in this community. And then I heard the Spirit of the Lord say this, I am going to release shockwaves of overcoming. And you are going to be shocked at how you overcome because you have got so used to not overcoming in this place. And the verse for the next few months is from Psalm 18, 29. With your help, this is King David, I will run through an army and with help from my God, I will leap over walls. Now we know there is witchcraft left, right and center in this place. And God just said to me, don't even go there because the resurrection power and the shockwave, it will not even matter anymore because of the force that God is going to put on you to run through the army of the enemy and to leap over their walls. And the spirit of the Lord, that's probably worth a bit more smiling than I'm currently getting. Okay? So the deal is this, if I preach well, you have to listen well. All right. <laughs> and the truth of this verse is going to explode in you. And you will build in this region what you thought would never be accomplished and what has long been forgotten and you will achieve what some of you laid down many years ago. And the Lord said very clearly over this region, you are not a rural backwater. And I feel like I need to speak that into the atmosphere. And sometimes you're speaking to people and sometimes you are speaking to principalities and powers when we prophesy. And I am speaking to the principality over this region that has said you will be a rural backwater and I am saying in the name of Jesus this is not a rural backwater and do you remember all the things that were birthed here that you hardly even hear of anymore and the Lord says I am stamping a truth on you that this place is a par point of heaven and that God is connecting heaven to earth here you are a place, yes, more amens, please. You are a place that is called to be deeply connected and plugged into the power source. And there is going to be a power surge that charges through you, to you, and out from you. And then I heard the Lord say this, I call you central. I call you pivotal for my plans for the nation. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> start to grab hold of what that is saying. And then I heard in the spirit the, the internal questions of your heart. And I just started to type as fast as I could what I heard you were doing internally. And you were saying things like this. Why are my peers doing better than me? Why am I so disappointed with ministry? Why am I so often disappointed in myself? Why is my marriage less than dazzling? Why are so few of my friendships nourishing? Why do I no longer feel attractive? Are the best years of my life over? How do I deal with the anger and the resentment issues in me that I have not ever resolved? How did what was promised not materialize? And is this the time that I should begin to scale back my dreams? 
And that collective sound of what's going on inside of you very personally was going up in the spirit realm like a huge sigh. And it sounded over the whole region like a sigh of dreams, <coughs> a sigh of settling for what has become, a sigh of getting up and going through the motions, and, and a deep, deep disappointment. And the Spirit of the Lord uh, said to me that you have sat under a spirit of disconnection. And it's happened bit by bit over many years so that you didn't always notice it when it was in process. So that friendships that were vibrant are now diminished. And the door has shut on situations that you thought would open even for adventure. Disconnection with fulfilling destiny. Disconnection with fulfilling call. Disconnection in transport links. You'll be able to know what the transport links are here better than I would. And disconnection in even essential key services. And I could see you almost floating above the land. And the Spirit of the Lord says, I want to reconnect you to my power and I want to reconnect you to each other. And what you thought was youthful enthusiasm that you long ago left behind you was actually faith in the power of God. And the Lord says that faith is being placed back into your hands again. Yes, Lord. And the Spirit of the Lord said this to me. Can I tell you, prophets prophesy almost on repeat sometimes. Because everybody needs to know God loves them. And yada, yada, yada. And there are moments where you hear God say something that you have never heard him before. And the prophet goes, oh, oh, I am paying attention, God. And this is one of those. I want you to build me a house of power for the nation. Mm. Yes. And this is not just a house of refreshing, and this is not just a house uh, of kind of lying down and soaking, but this is a house of glory and miracles and signs and wonders. And the Lord says, I want you to start <laughs> building some things with my power in mind. And I want you to build uh, with my victory as the dominant song in your hearts. And there is a new permission that God is releasing to you to color outside the lines of what is currently happening. Did you hear that? There's permission again. There will be a blasting away in your lives of the boxes that you have lived inside and the guidelines that men set in place, men set in place in this region. And the Lord said to you, oh, my children of Ayrshire, your rhythms here are humdrum and they are predictable. <laughs> Whoa. And actually the Lord said to me, they are painfully predictable, your rhythms. And the patterns that have worked up to now, the Lord says, I am undoing them. A different rhythm will come. And this season requires a bravery for a different rhythm. And the Lord says to you, Esher, there is going to be a joy in the new rhythm and the new season. That's a hallelujah right there. As you build a house for my power and my glory. And there will be a new satisfaction that comes to your lives as you hit the new rhythm of finding the power of God. Are you with me? Amen. 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 I'm not done. Well, you come. It's very encouraging. And God is giving you the mandate. You've got to hear this. Tell your friend, God is giving you a mandate to build a house of power. Turn to your friend and make that decree over them. Yes. God is giving us a mandate to build a house of power here in Ayrshire. Yes. And this, this house of power, this house of power will be known in Scotland and it will be known as the place where if you want a power encounter, yes. go into yes. Ayrshire. Yes. And you are going to build some things together 
corner where victory is your normal and not your exception. Yes. Come on, don't get your woman up. <laughs> and the Lord says, I am starting this work on your insides and the side of your inner man is being realigned tonight. So no longer will your inside say to you, oh, this is just about getting by. This is right, you know, I am just going to have to dig deep right now and it is always going to be like this. And some of you start and, and walk through the day and end the day with that as your default <laughs> setting and your default <laughs> setting is not a victory. And the Lord says, and get this, rather than your hands on as many things as they currently touch, your hands need to be on the one thing of building this house of power, of hosting my power and my presence. And the Lord says, set a victory tone and it will resonate with many. And the Lord, I heard him over and over say, do this one thing for me, Ayrshire. Do this one thing. Do this one thing. Do this one thing. Hmm. And there's a sense of a people who are spread too thin and nothing is getting established. And the Lord says, your DNA, your central call, is to be a people who give my power and my presence a space. Now, some people like me are called in Glasgow to build a house of the prophets for the nations. That is not your thing. Although, please prophesy. Some people are called to train on theology, like my dad in his theology matters schools. Some folk are called to raise up father heart schools of love and intimacy. But what you know in those things is that it takes focus and it takes expertise and those skills go out from the region and they start to shift the atmosphere of that region. And the Lord is saying to you, stop the other things and start to focus on miracles. Focus on my power again. Yes. Focus yes. on victory again. And the Lord says, you have to train each other in this. Now, mm. I'm going to come to it again later. After I had written this, I thought, when did I last preach in Ayrshire? And I, the last time I preached here was on the 23rd of February, 2014. I mean, it was 2013. I'll check my notes in a minute. But it was about three, four years ago. And you know what? The word of the Lord had an almost identical ring to it. And I was really shocked at the repetitive nature because I only double checked this afternoon after I had written this. And I had to say to God, why did it not land? And the Lord said to me, because they didn't train each other in it. And no one took responsibility. And the Lord says, train each other in signs and wonders and miracles. Mm. Speak about my power and my wonders, even though they may be seen far off in your own life. Live it, promote it, make a school of it, and build a place where I can sit as king. And sometimes God comes to a region, and the region needs friendship. And sometimes God comes to a region, and the region needs uh, a father, and he comes in that grace. And sometimes a region needs rescuing. But Ersher, he is coming as the king. And the spirit of the Lord says, Behold the king, behold the king, let his power come in and set a tone. And I actually felt that some other things have been built in this region that had been built. Why? Because the miracles and signs and wonders had not come through. And so you felt like, well, I need to do something valuable and something useful. And they were good things for a season. But the Lord is saying you're supposed to be the powerhouse of the nation. Yes. Mm. And I just saw Jesus weep with the disconnection. Mm. Mm. And tenderly, he was saying to me, tell them I'm restoring lost time. Tell them I'm restoring lost time. Just raise your hand for me. I speak to that spirit of dis uh, disconnection that is on your lives, that lingers, and even those who travel, 
from this place. It's like it follows you around. And the traction that you thought you would have in other nations has now fully manifested itself. And the Lord says, that is right, but I'm going to restore that. So I speak with those your hands raised I speak to that spirit of disconnection. And I pull it off your lives right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And I say that demonic stronghold that has trailed around after you, where you are in ever diminishing circles rather than ever, and then ever increasing circles, I break it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And we bind the spirit, as the word of God tells us to, we bind the strong man of disconnection and we cast him out from your lives and we loose in its place a spirit of connectivity and traction for what God has called you to. And while we're at it, we just pull off you any whispering of disappointment that you cannot shake in your own strength, though you have tried, but with the hand of God and in unity and agreement together, we speak a death word to disappointment. In Jesus' mighty name. 